Hey, what I've got for you today is uh, fulfilling a request from viewer Cracker Jack. This is the mission Bito underscore one, which uh, comes with Steel Beast. It's part of a three mission mini series. Uh, this mission is actually relatively simple um, from a planning perspective, pretty quick. Um, you're looking at 30 minutes or less and is a very good um stepping stone once you're through with platoon reconnaissance and want to move on to something where you're a little bit more evenly matched with the enemy. We are conducting a reconnaissance, uh, looking at the situation, the fragmentary order here. Unfortunately, the enemy portion doesn't really tell us a whole lot. It gives the bigger picture of, yes, the enemy's approximately 15 kilometers north of Baito. Um, and it, it, it kind of estimates that there may be reconnaissance in our area, obviously, but it's not going into details as much as I'd like with possible composition. I realize that with a reconnaissance mission, yes, you are there to, of course, provide that information to your higher headquarters, but giving some sort of estimate of, you know, we expect, for example, enemy light reconnaissance forces, which are going to be, you know, a platoon sized element of Burnham twos, as an example, or we expect motorized rifle dismounts, which will consist of dismounted squads and uh, BTR variant escorts, etc. cetera. Um, you can, of course, pause this and read it if you want. Mission doesn't really pertain to our actual situation, but the execution, what we're going to do during this operation is our higher headquarters wants to understand the enemy situation as far as within our area of operations. Is this the enemy's disruption zone where we're primarily encountering more reconnaissance elements or has the enemy uh, been able to push their tanks down to either Baito or Telvik and establish their battle zone within the AO? Uh, so that's really what we're trying to do as well as answer if there are motorized rifles uh dismounts in the area and of course if there are light reconnaissance elements planning for this mission is pretty simple i put in uh phase line names just to make it easier to refer to them on the map um to start with we're going to take our platoon of three leopard 1a5 dk1s it's a variant of the leopard 1a5 um, which has better armor so you're going to have a bit more survivability it's not anywhere near like you know the m1a2 sep but uh, against like PCs and things like that, you're more likely to survive. Uh, we're doing an engagement route after we cross the line of departure at phase line axe. Moving up to this point through the woods, kind of trying to use this terrain as well as we can. Uh, move up to phase line bow. And then from there, we're going to uh, continue forward to Claymore. And then from there... Um, if we haven't spotted enemy forces, we'll just take over manual control and proceed forward. I want to make sure that we're going at a slow rate of speed, close spacing for all of these, uh, just because we are the forward most element uh, besides some scouts, which we'll see in the area of operations to our right. Okay, enough chat. Let's get started and uh, do this thing. So one thing I forgot to do is increase our initial speed to top speed to uh, be able to pretty quickly and rapidly get into position. Wait for our tanks to maneuver and we'll take off and off we go to the races. Do some time compression here. And of course, all of the uh, actual radio calls in this mission are in not English. So I can't tell you exactly what they're saying. I know that uh, Gold Grabber is our element's name, so they're talking to us about something. But yeah, I don't really know what they're saying. It doesn't matter. You can accomplish this mission without it. Can I do a quick uh, time compression here to move forward? We've got. Yep, our reconnaissance elements, spotting enemy PCs here. That looks like a uh, motorized rifle platoon. I'd imagine that we'll encounter dismounts. Probably, based on where they are, probably within this wood line. But we'll see.
continue carrying on forward. Looks like there is a uh, spotted some sort of enemy vehicle in the town of uh, Gorlick. There it is. Fire, fire deep. Just missed him. Yeah, my gunner ain't uh, really on point right now. But that's all right. Reload Sabo since we'll just be firing it into the woods otherwise. I think he was able to successfully displace. Yep. Unfortunate. Move into a line formation. And uh, got infantry in the woods, along with uh, enemy PCs. Start engaging these guys. MG3 is uh, noticed it as a little bit quicker of a rate of fire. It seems like I miss a little bit more than the uh, I do with the M240. So you want to make sure that you're definitely within the uh, max Fire effective job. range Target. of uh, 900 meters for a point target with these guys. always more. They're deploying smoke, which is good if we didn't have thermals. And that looks like the uh, majority of their force will continue in towards the wood line. Got some uh, more enemy PCs over there through the woods. See if we can get a good laze. That's about right. Hit. Second PC. Hit. Not sure if that was a kill. Nope, doesn't look it. We're running out of AP, so we're gonna have to reload after this. And, uh, yeah, not sure what the AI is exactly doing there, but, um, in the new update, they tried to fix the pathfinding, and for the most part it works, but occasionally they'll just do some very weird wonky stuff like that, so, you know, watch your fire. Continuing to fire at uh, the enemy PCs. And there's the center one, looks like troops are dismounting. We had heat up, that's why. So, of course, heat against trees uh, just, you know, explodes, which is not great for what we're wanting to do. But we killed them anyway, so it's okay. Move to a wedge formation, conduct a reload at this point, and then uh, continue to proceed forward. I kind of, based on the enemy retreating into the woods, want to go through here. So we'll do that as soon as our reload is complete and we're back up with all of our uh, ammunition. Make sure that everyone does it here. Roger. 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 Ah. 
Okay, let's go. I'm just using time compression to speed it up. Um, so, yeah. Contact. Troops. Troops to our rear. Um, yeah, I guess they're there. We might as well. We've got sufficient time remaining in the scenario. We'll be okay. Gunner, collect. Troops, fire to just. That's not right. There he is. Gotta be careful with lacing. Try to get a better angle on him. Flashing all around him, I just need to keep moving. Target. Okay, that got him. Gonna modify our path here. Put it in a different manner that makes a little bit more sense. So right now, I'm going to go to here and make sure, yep, motorized rifle dismount spotted, which is trigger number four. I'm going to activate that because, obviously, that's exactly what we saw right there. Haven't really seen anything that I would consider light reconnaissance. I would consider that to be something more like, uh, you know, Burdum 2s. Um, didn't really see those yet. Not exactly sure if that's what the scenario designer intended. You can always go into the map editor and look at the specifics if you want, but uh, that's why it definitely pays in the briefing to lay it out um, in absolutely non uncertain terms so that your player uh, for a mission like this just understands what they're trying to see. So, you know, enemy light reconnaissance force consisting of, you know, two Burdum 2s or something of that nature. Scouts are finding more troops. We're just going to bypass at this point. I'm not too particularly worried about them. At least for our mission. Those guys should probably be a little bit concerned about it. Um, I don't think I mentioned it before, but yeah, you also don't have any uh, really support assets allocated to you in this mission. I did notice playing it uh, through earlier. Um, with the new update, you do have airstrikes as well as precision munitions. Excuse me, precision munitions, if I can talk. Uh, but that's more of the case of just a string of updates coming along rather than that being the designer's original intent. So you can use those as you will. But from my understanding, the original intent was it just you engaging enemies with direct fire. And, uh, obviously, you know, using smoke and retreating if you encounter something that you can't handle. And, uh, we're coming up on a BMP platoon here. It's great. Might help, too, if we use the proper type of, uh, weapon, right? Get my forces online. This is where, uh, of course, using, you know, that sort of, uh, Artillery would work. I want these guys to launch missiles at me. If I can help it. That was pretty clear. I think that hit him. Oh, great, there's more. Awesome. Yeah, we walked right into this. <laughs> Fire! 
target. Yeah, that was uh PC. lucky. Fire, PC, fire. Target. Last team, <sighs> PC. Yeah, fire. Target. PC. Yeah, that kind of happens, I guess. I don't know if this mission accounts for uh, friendly forces with scoring. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. It's fine. So, of course, if you have uh, indirect fire assets, obviously you would, you know, call them up in a situation like that just because you're completely outnumbered, really. It's not a fair fight. Of course, there's always more. There are always more. I think uh, that's him over the top there. I believe. Yep, looks Fire. right along the road. Yep, there we go. Too high. And that was a, uh, yeah, that's basically a company uh, that we just killed in the uh, defense. I'm going to back up and conduct a reload because we're pretty low. Um, what may have been, you know, thinking back upon it, I got kind of tunnel vision there and got a little caught up in the fight. Popping smoke uh, from my lead vehicle, especially since my wingmen weren't uh, pulling up to support me at that time, um, would have been a better tactical decision. Um, probably would have kept that tank from being destroyed. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, it's very easy to get tunnel vision with stuff like this. Go into a reload and continue to scan for any other enemy vehicles. I want to say there might be one there. Maybe. We'll have to go forward. I'm counting eight. There's normally uh, nine plus the commander. So ten total. Of, uh, you know, as far as like a company of uh, BMPs. I think Roger. it's probably because our friendly troops have uh, encountered enemy forces that they're not, uh, we're not able to use time compression. So yeah, I'll uh, cut this to the point where we're reloaded and uh, back moving forward. All right, we're up and reloaded. We're going to continue forward to uh, uh, get observation on Lito and uh, see if there are enemy tanks in the area. Currently, we haven't spotted any light reconnaissance forces. Um, we have, of course, spotted a company of BMPs, which we destroyed. Yep, that happened. And, uh, yeah, looking to see if there's tanks. sure if that's his turret um, which I think it might be actually getting another look at it kind of hoping that's what it is because that would make things a lot easier
Yeah, vehicles occasionally cook off in this game. Uh, certainly makes, you know, target identification a lot easier as for what's dead versus what's not. Um, I know I've killed that one, for example, but obviously it's harder to see if it hasn't changed shape or color. try to uh looks like there's a slight hill coming up here near near uh, telvik we'll try to crest that gain some observation got an enemy uh infantry soldier there i think they're armed with rpgs so uh you want to be very careful when you're clearing out these areas make sure that you're going fairly deliberate uh with such a small force Got uh, more infantry over there, I believe. Yep, there he is. I think I could see an RPG on his back. Switch back to thermals, gain some observation forward, and try not to uh, run into a platoon of tanks. Yeah, that's just his turret. troops located to our right we're gonna bound forward I don't really uh, want to take a lot of time to engage him at this point we're gonna keep going forward uh, to Baito until we either reach the town which is gonna be our limit of reconnaissance or we encounter something that we physically can't kill uh, maybe like those uh, troops that they keep directing us onto. To uh, stop your commander from automatically rotating your turret, you can press the T key. It's basically you calling out, hey, I've identified something, and uh, it'll immediately stop them from designating you to the target. Which can obviously be an annoyance if you're, you know, looking at something that is of, uh, you know, basically a threat to you, like, you know, a tank platoon or something they AI hasn't identified and they're trying to direct you onto one single dude at 900 meters with an RPG. Um, sure, he's a threat if you get within 300 meters, but at 900, you don't really have to worry about him. Looks like the next kind of terrain feature they're going to encounter is right here at the end of the uh, arrow appears to be a little hill. I think we can see it kind of right there. Um, we can try to crest that, gain a visual on the town itself. I'm going to start slowing down here as we move to crest. We've got, uh, yeah, another 17 minutes uh, remaining with this mission where we need to be able to report this reconnaissance information, and we're already at the last uh, reconnaissance objective, so I'm not particularly worried about it. Better to go slow and be deliberate and uh, make sure that you survive than try to rush to failure. seeing anything in the town besides buildings. Let me pause, check the map, and send some reports. So we've determined that uh, Telvik does not have panzers or tanks. Excuse me. 
Um, I'm not seeing a uh, not seeing enemy presence here, though. We haven't gone far en enough into the town to really rule it out, so we're gonna do that. Try to give it a little bit of a berth here so we can see down the roads. Uh, make sure that we're not drawn into an infantry ambush or something of that nature. I think I'm actually going to shift to an echelon left. looks very empty and eerily quiet. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary um, as far as thermal contacts. I'm going to say we're going to get to that group of houses basically right there. And if we haven't seen anything by that point, uh, we're going to turn back, head to uh, Gorlick, where our mission will accomplish. I'm tempted to say that, uh, yeah, we'll confirm, but it's looking like there are not light enemy reconnaissance forces within our area of operations. And uh, there are also not, obviously, enemy tanks here. It's a bush. Yep, I see nothing here. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to move into a line formation, conduct a retreat back to the main road itself. And uh, once we get there, We'll immediately uh, we kind of move it a little bit to somewhere that makes more sense. We'll move into a march, drive down to Gorlick, and uh, we're going to keep that at close interval at our top speed. And I'm going to remove the tactic there um, so that we automatically transition. Of course, can't use time compression because there's that one single machine gunner there um, that is obviously preventing that. To send up reports, uh, yeah, no tanks in Baito, and I didn't see any light reconnaissance elements within our area of operations. I would hardly consider a, a uh, excuse me, company of uh, BMP-2s to be, you know, light or reconnaissance. Yeah, they're basically saying, hey, get back to Gorlick and, uh, you know, report for the debriefing, so we're going to do that. I think at this point, based on the lack of enemy contact, we'll just move into a column, move to top speed, and uh, yeah, basically at this point, just drive down a road. So uh, once this is complete, um, I'll come back once we reach Gorlick, the mission ends, and we conduct the after action review. All right, so we're arriving up back at the town of Gorlick, and uh, Yep, basically have 7 minutes 30 seconds remaining with the mission, and uh, we'll go into the AAR as soon as the in condition fires here. Make sure we've answered everything. Yep. Move into a line and uh, orient towards the north, and there's the mission complete uh, trigger. So we'll see how we did. Major victory. Uh, lost one vehicle, so that's lowering our score from, you know, probably 100 out of 100 to, you know, a mere 90 out of 100. Um, okay, gunnery, average time to kill, not great. It is what it is. You're going to get different stuff. 
um, as far as statistics compared to just the tank range where it's very scripted versus here where it's a lot more dynamic. Um, it is what it is. I'm honestly happy with that sort of things. Uh, looks like we killed 15 uh, units um, overall of the enemy, which is a lot. So we'll go ahead and go through the AAR. I'll try to talk about two things. One, what I could have done different here at the encounter at phase line bow. And two, uh, specifically go into, um, in this case, we didn't encounter enemy tanks. But if we did, what we could have possibly done uh, to, you know, really plan for that a little bit better. So moving forward, right, encounter enemy infantry. Uh, there's basically this vehicle here. I believe it's some sort of BTR. Yep, exactly. Um, encounter that. We fired, missed. They flee back towards Telvik. Um, got in a firefight there in the wood line. Killed the majority of the enemy's uh, reconnaissance assets, or not reconnaissance, uh, motorized infantry assets there. Proceeded to go through the woods. And we'll go ahead and look at where the enemy is currently positioned. So based on where they're currently looking, so we looks like we missed a few BMPs that were in the woods. That's fine. Uh, it is what it is. Looks like for the most part, um, they're covering in general in this vicinity. Got a few looking kind of in this open area here. I think... Either way, with how we had to maneuver was not a good option. I think going through uh, this route here, where we at least had a little bit of cover um, and concealment as we approached, so we could get basically to this position here, set that to about three meters, that's TC height, see the enemy PCs and start engaging them. So we go up, we do that, um, got kind of our wingmen here trying to move into position, not doing a really that great of a job, I guess. Um, what may have helped once I got up here with my tank is one immediately pop smoke after I know I'm getting into pretty heavy contact and another, I could have pressed the E key or oriented this direction to establish a battle position. And that would have maybe helped the AI, uh, you know, move up a little bit more, obviously with human players, that wouldn't be a problem. And we may have not suffered any losses here. Not really a big deal. And that was honestly a pretty big fight. So. I'm actually kind of pleased that we only lost one vehicle. Uh, went through there, basically killed pretty much everything except that one BMP in the woods. Uh, it is what it is. You don't always get off them. And there was really, yeah, nothing left on the map uh, besides that element. So in regards to tanks, right, with where the enemy is going to place them um, in the vicinity of Telvik, if you kind of look at the map, you can see some uh general locations where they might try to uh, kind of put their tanks. I'd imagine probably on the far side, um, maybe kind of get establishing a battle position right in this vicinity. So they've got pretty clear uh, fields of fire basically through this uh, avenue of approach here as well as through here. And they're able to cover that pretty well. Um, obviously didn't encounter, didn't encounter them there. Uh, the other option with uh Baito up here, see if I can kind of see it on the map. Yeah, so there's a little bit of micro terrain here. If you get really low, you can see it where they could establish probably on a hill located, you know, probably like between the platoons, one here, probably one like right in this position and maybe, you know, one more in this area. So they're kind of using this a uh, little bit of micro terrain in this hill here, right? If you look at the elevation, elevation of eight meters, they can drive back, go to seven and six pretty quickly. So they're able to pull forward, fire, and then retrograde. So that's a good way to kind of predict where the enemy might establish battle positions. Um, as for what to do if you actually encounter tanks, which obviously we lucked out in this mission and didn't, um, really once you encounter them, your reconnaissance and force is by all effects over at that point because you've encountered something that you can't actually kill. With your organic assets, what I would recommend is immediately, as soon as you have a confirmation of enemy tanks in either Telvik or in uh, Baito itself, right, pop smoke, start retrograding, and start going through a covered and concealed route, right, where the uh, enemy tanks are not able to physically observe you as you move back to Gorlick. Um, yeah, and, you know, it kind of depends on the random uh, 
number generator gods here on if they spawn in the vicinity of Telvik, in which case there could be something further on. You don't know, but uh, trying to fight your way through a company of enemy tanks with a platoon of Leopard 185 DKs is not going to go well. Um, you know, you could try uh, with some good players. You could maybe do it, but it's not really recommended. If uh, you happen to go in and modify this scenario to give yourself some indirect fire support, which I would argue would not be unrealistic to have maybe a battery allocated to a reconnaissance effort for a, uh, what is this, uh, battalion level um, operation, right? Um, what you could do in this case is you could be a bit more robust with your fires planning, right? Obviously, if you encounter a fight here, um, as soon as you encounter that, immediately call for indirect fire, pop smoke, continue the direct fire fight, and then you're hitting the enemy with multiple forms of contact, which is going to significantly uh, reduce their ability to um, concentrate firepower and maximize their combat power on your position. Uh, two, as far as enemy tanks, if you have indirect fire, you could simply plan, for example, you know, based on the terrain right here, we can see that, you know, you're kind of cresting a hill. You could put, for example, um, a fire mission here for smoke. So if you crest it and let's say we didn't go this way and we had indirect, we could see, oh, there's an enemy battle position here for a company sized element. Fire the smoke back up and we've got some cover. And you could do that at basically the vicinity of phase line bow, Clay, uh, Claymore, as well as in the vicinity of dagger. Um, as you're moving forward and all of those would work. So, hey, uh, this mission has a lot of variables. I can't cover every one, but hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of how you're going to do a reconnaissance mission along a fairly narrow front. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you're new to Steel Beast, this is a scenario that you'll check out. It's, as you can tell, not too overly complicated. If you can manage a platoon of uh, vehicles and hit a couple of triggers, you can definitely do this. So hope you liked it. Uh, leave some comments below if you uh, want to see anything else or if you've got any questions. See you guys later.